But at the end of the day, you can't 100% say that, like, all right, well, we know this thing is going to be over. It's going to provide a distraction for people, what blah, blah, blah. But on the back end, it's kind of messing over the guys that, you know, like, say, uh, uh, what's the linebacker from the Colts? Uh, 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 oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. I know now that you are Conrad's friend. So I'm going to have to say to you, like I say to Conrad, <laughs> pick uh... one. Bro, I don't, Get I, off the I, fence. Pick I, one. I, one I, side or the other. Uh... I really can't. Plus, I, I, really, I really don't know yet. I want to be for the players to be like, all right, we need pick to pick one. We have, all right, so I will say push it back. Because push it back. At the end of the day, it's better for guys who are in the league. I mean, who want to be in the league, the small school. I'm, I'm rooting for that, that small school guy from fam or whatever. I don't know. We ain't got no football. We ain't got no prospects. But at the end of the day. Uh, uh, what about Stanley? Bro, he's trash. <laughs> Thank you. He's trash. What? Um, <laughs> but Not on camera. Guys, they got to right. be in the league. So. Get to my spot. Ain't nobody guarding. Run your mouth. I reply like I beg your pardon. First for your name, tarnish. I'm across step back. Also, oh, man, I didn't get to say it. Tom, Tom is great to see you, boy. Sarge, uh, what up, man? It's been a minute. And good, good to know, see bro. your face, bro. I'm glad you're good. That's good. Yeah. Are you ready? Let's rock. All right, guys. So here we go. This is Rick Sincere with MTNV Sports, man. I'm joined by the entire crew today. Plus, we got some guests. So because we're nice people here, we're going to let the guests go ahead and shout out themselves first. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and, and holler at my boy Thomas. Thomas, what's good, brother? How you doing, man? Well, I'm good, man. Uh, just, yeah, Thomas, people call me Spoon, Teaspoon, whatever, you know. Just, I like that. You know, just keep it real. All right. For sure, for sure. Like what's the up? nickname. Yeah, I don't know. Teaspoon, that's dope. Teaspoon. <laughs> All right, but what's up, Mike Sarge? How you feeling, brother? Yo, what's good, man? I'm just glad to be here. You already know Mr. Mike Sarge, Mr. Live Off, and you already know I'm glad to be here. Y'all know what it is. Yes, sir. All right, yo. Okay, here we go. Let's go around the world right quick. All right, let's start off with my man, The Voice. How you doing, Voice? What's good? You know what it is. It's your man, <laughs> the myth, the legend, the voice. <laughs> Bet. <laughs> what's oh, up, man. JP? How you feeling, bro? Yo, what's up, man? It's your cousin's favorite cousin, your auntie's favorite nephew, man. JT in the building. Campus Connect crew. Let's go. Bet, bet, bet. We got Venora. How you doing, ma'am? I'm good. How are you guys? I'm Venora. Hey, girl. Oh. Like, girl, that hair is late, girl. I'm right. You, <laughs> Love it. Girl, you, right. look like a, you look like a smooth ramp. All right. We got Miles. <laughs> What's good? What? How you feeling? Why the, can we not skip over that? I don't understand what just happened. <laughs> I'm going to let that be. Yo, what's going What's up, on, Miles? man? How it's you feeling? I'm good, bro. What's going on? It's your boy, Miles. JT, you're nobody's. My aunt don't know who you are at all, so you're not my favorite cousin. What's up, family? What's good? And then we got Connie Westside. What's good, Westside? Hey, man, it's Connie Westside, the best side, the other half of Campus Connect crew. In here, baby. Let's talk about it. Yo, so um, we're going to kick off with something that's kind of controversial, um, kind of weird, and, and a lot of people basically straight up say it's kind of just nonsense, um, but we'll let it ride anyway. So um, what's happening is Pat Riley came out just the other day, and he said that um, at, at a point, I guess during his career, Dwayne Wade was a better player than Kobe Bryant. Dwayne Wade, Dwayne Wade was a better player than Kobe Bryant. And we, we talked earlier about this. I'm going to let JT kick it off. We'll, <clears> we'll, and Miles, I know you want to hop in. We'll, we'll let Miles hop in after that. We got six minutes on the clock. All right, JT, yeah. bro, is Dwayne Wade in some way, shape, or form? Because that's the thing. A lot of people are like, yo, in no way, shape, or form is Dwayne Wade a better player than Kobe Bryant. But is there? Is there a little bit of a way that Dwayne Wade is a better player than Kobe Bryant? Talk to us, bro. Dwayne Wade is nowhere near. They're nowhere in the same conversations, same circle. No. I'm going to give you some stats. Over Kobe Bryant's career, career, he averaged 25 points. Um, Dwayne Wade, 22. Okay? Not far off. A uh, field goal percentage. Kobe Bryant? Uh, 41.7%. Wayne Wade. Um, let me go, hold on. 46.5. Stat wise, accolades. Bro, they kind of similar, bro. They, they Kobe Bryant similar, bro. Is, is like 
in the whole other, like it's top no. of the line, bro. Hold on, you shouldn't have went with stats, bro. I'm sorry. You, <laughs> those Why stats, not? those stats just say, hey, this is how close they are. <laughs> but close, but okay, okay. Has, did Dwayne Wade win a championship without superstars? I mean, but the stats say this is yes. how close we are, Shaq bro. Was, yes. Shaq was still coming. Shaq, Shaq was still that guy. He take was, away, take away LeBron, take away Chris Bosh, take away uh, Shaq. Would Dwayne Wade lead Miami to a uh, 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 title? Well, I, let me also, say this about that, though. Kobe Dwayne has Wade led pretty up. much the same squad on, to the second round of the playoffs that Kobe sat at home with when the Shaq trade happened. Mm-hmm. Mm. Big he is a better teammate than Kobe ever could think of being. So... Teammate and player, no, teammate, we're talking about player. Like, and, and he won the title yeah, with Shaq when Kobe couldn't. So in those instances, in those ways, he's better than Kobe. He won three. Kobe was the Kobe looks way, like though? the best teammate to have if you want to win a game. Like, let's keep it a real. Let's keep it a stack. Come Kobe's on, defensive skills was st- a one. Talk your he stuff. Was first, first team all defense nine times. How are you going to tell me as a better teammate than some – no, no, no. Yeah, the way nice. That's no, tell, cute. Tell him, but you tell want him a savage that. on the court. You don't tell want him how many Dwayne Wade got. more Wade out of the same people than Kobe did. Tell That's him how many Dwayne Wade got. I, I got to do it. I got to bring context to this because I can see it's already getting out of hand. All right. The context of what Pat Riley was talking about. Sorry, he was not be, talking about crazy. their entire career. He was talking about, he was reflecting on the 2005 to 2006 season, right? And he was saying, and I got the quote directly in front of me, says, Dwayne was better than Kobe at that time. He had a better year by having the impact on winning in the finals, in the biggest moments, on the biggest stage. In 2006, that is when Dwayne Wade was the finals MVP against Dallas. Now with that in context. Mike, there's no context. Can you say that Dwayne Wade was better that year than Kobe Bryant? You can't debate that because of what he had to do and what he had to carry. Which, by the way, that that 2006 season, uh, the Lakers got bounced by Phoenix. Hey, Cop, can you relax? We live in the past. I'm right. just, I'm just saying. I'm just, I'm just saying. So is the question <laughs> like, all time? Wait, hold on. So you said you telling me a second year, a second year, a second year Wade is better than a seasoned Third vet year. Kobe? Yeah. No, he won't because no. Just, no, because the question. Let's put context around it. Yeah. That's what. That's what. No, no, no. Saying. Context. I'm, I'm using the context clues. Yeah. Are you, right. The, he's referring. He's referring to that 2006 <laughs> year. That's what Pat Riley's talking about. Right. So if we're saying okay. is are we saying 2006 is prime Kobe? Uh yeah, you coming out? Yeah, because he, we'll he scored eighty one. I give you that. Two thousand six, two thousand seven. I will give you. So, I give you prom code. Everybody in the league. So you're telling me that guy is not better than Dwayne Wade? I think that had okay. a shack on the team. I think, no, no, no. I, I, what I'm saying is, if someone wanted to make a debate about that, I don't think that's far fetched considering how high a level Dwayne Wade played in the finals. He's saying that year. That's yes, far-fetched. that's not. Yeah, far-fetched. that's not far fetched at all. No, that year I would say Dwayne was probably a better player that year. I think he came off an ACL injury. Don't forget that he came off an ACL injury before the playoffs. True. I think he was a better. If we're talking about, I I would. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take Kobe, obviously, but that 0506. I think he's a better teammate and a better glue piece than Kobe was that year because you got to think in 0506. He's two years removed from from Shaq, still trying to prove I can win it without him. So he's in a different mindset than Dwayne Wade is. Yeah, Dwayne Wade comes there. to No, that comes that's to the season that Shaq won in uh Miami, which is the That's what I'm saying. So yeah, two years after it wasn't, it wasn't two years removed. It was the first year. Was it the first so oh five, yeah. oh six, oh four yeah, yeah. Yeah. Before Carl Malone. Okay, so the first year he went over there. So he got a he got a prime Dwayne. I think Dwayne coming out of Marquette and playing two years there, being more NBA ready than Kobe was initially coming out of high school in '96. He, I mean, really, he's not coming into his stride until 2000, 2001. that he plays if Kobe wants to lead the league in assists he could do it we we all know of Kobe, whatever Kobe wants to do I don't do, believe he that, that. I don't believe that, yeah. I don't believe that. <laughs> but, yeah, I but don't you have believe to that. you have to okay so think so think about this so think about this when you when you think about if Kobe wanted to do something when have you ever seen 
in any game, any season, any documentary, when Kobe's, if Kobe says, I want to do this, he's going to do it. He wanted to get better footwork, he got better footwork. When he wanted as an explosive as he was, he changed his game up to still be a, a, a contributor to the team. This is what – same thing you're seeing with LeBron now. He, he's not as explosive or athletic as he used to be. So he's playing different. He's, back, he's using his back down skills, turning around fadeaways, finishing at the rim, and being a lot smarter with how he scores the ball. I think Kobe is the same way. If Kobe, if Kobe came into the league and said, I want to lead the league in assists, he would lead the league in assists. Like that's that's just that's a Kobe that's a Kobe mindset. I, I, all right, I don't well, think we, he don't want to. And it, and he didn't, he didn't he didn't care to. All no, right, well, to. let's 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 shift gears a little bit. Yo, uh, what's else on the what's else is on the agenda tonight, uh, Rick? What we got? All right, so the next thing we're gonna talk about. Can y'all hear me? Yes, yes sir. sir. Awesome, awesome. The next thing we'll talk about is this. So, uh, and look, the challenge for tonight is for me to walk through this entire episode without saying one thing about my favorite team. So I'm going to go through the entire episode <laughs> and not mention my favorite team one it's time. It's all over your background. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just, I, can't, I can't say it with my mouth. So, <laughs> so he's going to show it with his back. So, so, but let me say this, right? Um, okay, so there is a GM in the NFL. And that GM said that, <laughs> that GM <laughs> said that it's probably best if we move the NFL draft back because of what it takes to actually get this process done completely. Think about this for one second, right? There's a lot of pro days going, you know, we're not being able to see pro days. So generally around this time, we'd be getting updates from pro days from small school guys. We're getting none of that right now, right? So we're getting none of that. Um, the Okay, I'll say this. There's, oh, you know what? I can't mention them. Okay, cool. So, um, okay, that team. So there was a team, right? And they have a running back, and I forgot his name. But that running back um, made that special connection with the coach based on a pro day. And a lot of stuff happens in pro day that we're not getting that. So some people are saying that it's probably in our best interest to move the draft back. The question is, right now they're scheduled, I think, for April 23rd. Do you think we should move the draft back, or do you believe that we should keep the draft exactly where it is right now? All right, so I'm going to answer this question real quick. Keep the draft. Make the money. Don't care about anything else. All we're doing is making money. That's all we want to do. I don't care about the money that, that we could possibly make. If everybody was here and everybody was in place at Las Vegas, I don't care. Go make the money because you're going to get the money from, from the TV revenue. You're going to get the money from uh, get the money from the sponsorships that's going to come out of it. And then you got commercials on top of that. Get the money. Keep it, uh, keep the money. All right, so. Also, all right, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. I can go. Um, so this is why I, it's, it's a two, it's kind of a two prong. Um, so you with. Like a two prong guy. Yeah. He, <laughs> he, he, <laughs> like <a> two. <laughs> but um, with a lot of guys, not, not the small school guys, a lot of guys don't get those invites to the combine. So, all right. So this is probably, this is more likely their time to shine. They get to bring in prospects and things of that nature. But I think you have to kind of, you have to, I'm on the fence with it because I can understand the logic of pushing it back, but I do, I, I can understand the logic of uh, keeping it the same date. Because if you keep it the same date, it's, you don't, the NFL doesn't need the money. NFL don't need, uh, all those billionaires don't need that cash. Bro, but we want to make up. You want to make up that revenue. I don't care. You got to make up something. Of course, you, it is. Uh, it's always. About you don't know what's gonna happen. You don't know what's gonna happen in, in the spring. I mean, spring, but in in the fall, you don't know what summer is gonna look like. You don't know. That's Sorry. My point. That's my point. You don't. We don't know when this COVID nineteen thing is gonna. When it. When the the whole they say the when it's on the down slope because I heard something about college college football one squeezing the season during the summer months because of the. Uh, so, because I guess it would be on the down slope, it predicts it's going to be on the down slope then or something like that. I don't know. But at the end of the day, you can't 100% say that, like, all right, well, we know this thing is going to be over. It's going to provide a distraction for people, what, blah, blah, blah. But on the back end, it's kind of messing over the guys that, you know, like, say, uh, uh, what's the linebacker from the Colts? Uh, 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 excuse me, I'm sorry. I know now that you are Conrad's friend. So I'm gonna have to say to you, like I say to Conrad, <laughs> pick uh, one. Bro, I don't, get I, off I, the I, fence. 
Pick one, one side or the other. I really can't. I really can't of course, I, I really, I really don't know yet. I want to be for the players to be like, all right, we need pick to one. We have all right. So I will say push it back. Because push it back. at the end of the day, it's better what? for guys who are in the league. I mean, who want to be in the league, the small school. I'm, I'm rooting for that that small school guy from Fam or whatever. I don't know. We ain't got no football. We ain't got no prospects. But at the end of the day, uh, uh, what about Stanley? Bro, he's trash, bro. <laughs> Thank you. He's trash. He's what? Um, but <laughs> not on camera. Guys, they right. got to right. be in the league. So they, 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 they got to find a way in the league. And without that, you know, it's just going to go off the tape that we've already seen for all these big time college schools. You know what I'm saying? Colleges and stuff like that. The, the draft is the biggest game of craps in the world. Just do it. You you don't know who you're going to get. You can run all your computers. You can have all your conversations and nothing works out. Or you pick somebody on a whim and then, you know, they turn out to be Tom Brady. Just do the draft. No, look, okay, here's, here's what the GM said. The GM outright said, hey, this ain't fantasy football. This ain't a situation where a bunch of guys get together, right, and just kind of look at the screen like, oh, uh, that one. That's not yeah. that situation. That's exactly what it is. That is it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. It is, nowhere near it is a it lot. Is. Are you serious? This is not that process. It's not fantasy they, football. They, where you can just they kinda, put oh, the, what's the stat boy like, on the, on the, on the box, like, and it's a lot. They say, hey, who wants this guy? Dude, these are investments that were – these are, like, monetary investments that we're making that can determine the outlook of my franchise for the rest of, like, the time we're here. Think about this. These are rookie second. deals. These are – no. These are these, rookie dude, deals. Do you not understand? No, I don't agree with that, boy. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on. Yeah, okay. I don't agree with that. I, I don't agree with it. It's just rookie contract. No, go, actually, break, break, break. Actually, go ahead because I want to add something to what you said. Like, keep keep talking about it. Bringing in a rookie – bringing in a great rookie – a rookie class, I say rookie. Bringing in a great rookie <laughs> class can – change the entire destiny of your team for years to come. Think sure. about where the Kansas City Chiefs were and how close they were to being Super Bowl champions. What changed the Kansas City Chiefs? Patrick Mahomes. I'm talking about draft, from financial drafting aspect, Patrick Mahomes, drafting Tyreek Hill changed the Kansas City Chiefs. That thing changed them. Think about the Cowboys, where they were. They suck now, but still, at one point, like a year ago, like two years ago, <laughs> we were like, they suck up now. <laughs> they stay <laughs> sucking. They the big suck. What happened? They drafted Dak. They drafted Zeke. Yeah. And all of a sudden, we were like, yo, look at these Cowboys. There's something different. They but you can look at it's all the different. problems we're they got now. But you can always mention that. Dak and drafting Zeke. Oh, but look, you didn't have nothing to say when I just mentioned the Chiefs. At all. Okay. Matter, matter of fact, a better example. To, don't even think about the success stories. Imagine what the Chicago Bears would look like if Mitchell they had Trubisky. Trubisky. They, they had, they had that talk, Mike. There you <laughs> go. Look, look imagine what Chicago would look like if they had Deshaun Watson. Imagine of all these other Wallace. teams that, that passed yeah. on these quarterbacks, yeah. what they would be looking like. Completely Where different. would they be? And, they traded up this, to not get Patrick Brown. To not get And I will say this to, to, to Rick's point, right? If I'll say this. If you're the NFL, hold the draft for monetary reasons, right? Because you got to also think about these other sports, right? If, if there's a possibility that the NBA may get pushed back or like their, their playoffs are going to be pushed back farther in, then that's another competitor for your sport during that time. Because people know when the NBA playoffs is on, oh, people tuning in. Like, I don't care oh, if yeah. it's the NFL or oh, oh, big facts, big facts. People will watch that, especially with the with – the, uh, Almost like the stories that are happening in the NBA. LeBron, 17th year, Kawhi calling him out. Is Giannis going to get past this? So there are legit storylines that people are paying attention to. So if you're the NFL, sure. yo, yo, take your money. But on the other side, I will say, I will say, um, if you're a team, especially if I'm a coach and my job is based off the success of my team, Oh no no no! I need to I, I need to get to know these small town players that went to these smaller colleges. I need to keep watching tape on, uh, tape on these guys that were on, in bigger programs because I need to know who I'm bringing in because one player can change the history of. Well, what is that? But don't you have time to do that now during the quarantine? Thank you. Actually, you, don't. So you, don't you don't have time. Right. No, you don't have time. You don't, no one, you you don't have time to watch the tape. No, I'm talking about social do. distancing. You, okay. you don't have that chance to get that one-on-one -on -one talks with them to really figure out where they're from, what they're about. So, so they had that mental makeup. So people team. tripping because they can't, I don't know, yeah, like FaceTime. Yeah, it's because so. they can't bring them in. And then on top of that, you, uh, and some of these guys, some of these places say like LA, they have like stay-at-home orders. So you, nice. you're putting some people at a, a competitive um, disadvantage. Um, 
uh, saying that, oh, well, this, it, th these people can't come in. They can't go to, they can't go to the facilities or whatever. How, how far, how think, far do you think, push that? Think about this for one but second. That's though. Life. Think about this for one second. So generally, <laughs> no, right. I'm sorry. You know what? You know what? Venor, go ahead. Venor. <laughs> okay. <That's life. laughs> so I was going to say, cause I, I know some of the logistics of the NFL, especially during um, the time of the, of the combines to the, the draft and to mini camps to, their um, organizational team activities, all those things are done in a, sorry. So all those things are done in like a, a time slot and they have to happen like chronologically. So the, unfortunately their um, or organizational team activities start May 20th. And we're all hoping that of course COVID-19 is done by then or at least flatten the curve a little bit by then so they can have those things. Because like, you're right, people can't come out in, some, like in LA, now DC, now New York, and all those areas where they can't are not allowed outside. So you're hoping that that can happen. So pushing the draft back pushes all that back, which will end up having a shorter mini camps, which means these kids will not even get a chance to even adapt to their teams correctly, which means they will fail out um, during the, the preseason. So I'm saying- on, the way it is, thank you. Keep Talk the draft the way stuff. it is so that you can get these kids a chance to, while they're quarantined, to get themselves together. Yes, yeah. unfortunately, the smaller schools and the um, smaller areas of D2 kids are not going to get the looks that they want, unfortunately. But there's always, um, you can be an undrafted um, free agent. It always goes those different routes. And also, that's yeah, also sure. part of your, your um, agent's job, to push you in front of people. They, like right now, while people are sitting at home, your agents yeah. should be pushing your tapes, pushing Thanks. you and, and marketing you. So talk your stuff, V. Thank you. So that's no. why I'm saying that it's best for it to stay the way it is so that let's hope things are getting back to normal by May so yeah. that we can get back to the football and rolling. Like you guys said, the, like we're going to bring back the NBA finals some type of crazy way. You know, While that's happening. These kids are in minicamp. These kids are um, OTAs and it's preseason beginning after that. Thomas, that's how you choose a side. But that's a, that's a, but that's a, that's a, assume, that's a, she killed that. Too, that's, yeah, us I see you. that's us assuming things are going to go back to normal. Yeah, but if they don't, that's then true. it's going to be the, like, why would I still delay it for kids that whose ages didn't give it crap about them and then push them? Yeah. Hey, hey, no, hey, hey. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to lie to y'all. I was one of those kids. Oh, yeah. I was one of those kids. There was COVID nineteen. No, no, no. I was, I was, I was the kid that my, my, my agent did not push my tape. So, See? hey, shout out, shout out to you, uh, shout out to you, Brad Johnson, crook. Oh, oh, shout oh, out Nathan oh, Stafford oh, who's pushing his kids right geez, now while, while they're out there. Yeah, Yo, people, yeah, hey, look, look. During hey, this time, generally, do we not know people? During this time, generally, do we not know people? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Do we not know people that are on the job that got that job because of a good interview and not because oh. of their performance? Oh, very no, true. I'm not saying that's not true because trust me, I got my job because of my good interviews and my <laughs> Come good on performances. Now. <laughs> so I'm just saying that for the NFL perspective, yeah, you can have a great interview. You can go out there and kill it um, during mini camp and during preseason, but you can be trashed during the, during the original season. So I'm okay. just saying, yes, I want these kids that are small time schools to get out there. That's their agent's job. Oh, no. no, no. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My point. My, I'm sorry. I got that confused. My point was saying, I, if I'm the player, I, mm -hmm. I want that interview. I don't care about the play later because especially if I'm at a smaller school. Bro, we got Dude, FaceTime. We got like, Zoom. Like. We got all these avenues. I don't want to hear that. We, we, I need to have the interview. Uh, like, bro, <laughs> get the money and go. Hey, next subject. Uh, he said get the money and go. <laughs> Next subject, man. Hey, you I'm ain't not... running the show. This is on me. I'm running it right cut, now. I'm cut running mic, this bro. right now, and y'all not letting mic, me do this. I'm about bro. to mute everybody's mic so we can move on to stuff. <laughs> when it's time to... I had a point 10 minutes ago. I never got that out. <laughs> <laughs> I think Venora cleaned the table up, man. So it is what it is. How she gonna clean the table when my point was 10 times? No, anyway. All right, so. Oh. <laughs> the NBA, I, NFL, I know how this stuff goes. Hey, there you go, yeah, man. Got the All right, so. so 
So in our next our next talk, what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring up our classic chat. You guys ready for classic chat? Let's get it. Awesome, man. So in our classic chat, what we're gonna talk about today um is no, y'all didn't let me talk. We talking about my tit. Nah, all right, cool. We're not gonna talk about. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, you, you're gonna have to pick another one to talk to. Not talk about them. You you have talked about them too much. I haven't Why? said my team's name one time. Doesn't matter. It's not one your, time. Implication. It's your background. What? It's your background. What are you hey, talking look, about? they ain't got nothing to do with me. Yeah. All right. <laughs> and I tried to start this off with a different background. Y'all made me um, put this background on. Oh, whatever. All man. right, anyway, so so let's hop on, guys. The next thing we'll talk about is this. This is kind of like, okay, I'll give y'all a choice. Y'all go one, since everybody's here, let's go one or two. I won't tell you what one or two is. Some of y'all already know, but let's go one or two. Hold up a finger and let me see where you at. I can see all of y'all right now. Just hold up your finger. You want one or you want two? We got one. So for one, one, two, three, one. four. All right, one win. All right, cool. So we're going with one. All right, and, and one today for the classic chat is this. Um, and I'll give you a question number two later. We won't talk about it, but I'll at least give it to you. Question number one is this. Which musician had the greatest influence on sports? So which musician had the greatest influence on sports? Now, you got to tell me the artist. You got to tell me what made his, um, his or her, right? Uh, what made their influence so great? All right, talk to me. Who you got? on his albums in the music videos he definitely put toronto not toronto not, hasn't been on the map but he's definitely he works with the toronto raptors now it's just like i think drake and like i even i'll even say lil wayne have pushed their own agendas on in the music industry into the nba like you see like lil wayne on the undisputed you see drake oh, yeah. on first take asking him about what he cares about so it's just i think that those two definitely have made their way into the sports industry but have yeah, they Jay-Z. been on a movie like James Brown? Okay, I, I can <laughs> Jay-Z. <laughs> no, I'm just about to say, for me, it's easily Jay-Z. Like, yeah. easily Jay-Z. Like, mm-hmm. like it's, not, it's, not even, it's not even just that, like, he's an icon in his own right. And, you know, that obviously you see his face and things like that. He owns part of a team. Mm-hmm. Like, he, he, he owns part of a team. Oh, and by the way, he is actually empowering players because now he's an agent as well. Yeah. So he, he's helping players like Kevin Durant out and, and showing these guys like, look, this is how I made this money. I need you guys to understand. And, and yes. not to mention that uh the NFL move too. Right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Like I'm saying, like like he's legitimately an advocate now. Like he's not just like the music guy. Like he's yeah. a legit businessman. But, but I mean, but the argument could be him. made. But the argument could be made is that he transitioned into business, and now now we, we know him from like I'm I'm not. transition into business and now because of his business moves being part owner of the nets kind of bringing them on as a brand ambassador putting his name connected with that team to make us kind of look at brooklyn but also in the terms of the nfl move and things like that i don't really see i don't look at jay-z as an artist anymore you, you get what, what i'm saying I, 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 get, I get what you're saying I, I do. you're saying he's a business man <laughs> yeah, pretty okay. much. I look at him as a businessman, not an artist anymore. I think and the I, business I is a part that. of his brand, though. I think the business is a part of his brand. I don't think yeah. that takes away from his music. I think no, honestly, I don't think it takes. Real, a, yeah, I think like if we're being real. Who's aged in hip hop as well as he has? No one. No one. Oh, no one. No one. Like no in hip hop, nobody. Yeah. Nobody like, has aged nah, like that. Nah, I'm a close. And then it kind of sort of back up what Mike's saying, like his agent, like his players list is like outstanding. You got Saquon Barkley, Kyrie Irving, Tom wow. Gurley, Juju yeah. Smith, uh, you got Leonard Fournette. Like his his Business. his roster is like a legit solid My roster. My man said, I'ma stop doing music and I'm gonna do it here and there. Andre, but I'm, but I'm gonna do business now. And that's exactly but what the agency not- came out like. You gotta give a, a night. Like, I'm sorry, go ahead, Tim. I mean, T-Spoon. Bro, I like <laughs> I like it. Man, but 
this is why I will say I understand the Jay Z point, but bro, like I think Wayne, man, like Wayne, that he just made it like a he made rapping a sport, and then me listening to his music, he has so many like sports quotes in his music, and then like the kind of the, the transfer it, transfer it like to with the uh, what's the the uh, undisputed now, yeah, uh, undis- undisputed and stuff. Stuff like that. I just think that like Wayne, he was just I from from like what was it like two thousand like three oh four yeah from that time about right, bro, everybody was listening to to, uh, to Weezy. So it was just right. I mean J- Jay Z has one hey. of the most direct lines of impact on sports, and mm-hmm. I say we have to give a nice uh, honorary to Ice Cube. For not yeah. only having a team, he started a whole league. I like that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look. yeah. And, he, and he did it the right way too. That's what I like. He did he did it the right way. He marketed just enough. He said, "Hey, we won't get, we're gonna take these guys to these cities. We're not gonna put we're not gonna touch no names. To, we're not gonna touch no city cities. Uh, these these teams. We're just gonna go ahead and put the 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 big three, whatever the team then, is. That's what it is." He did that well, so I have. Sure. I, I would give. I would give it to him, but the person I want to give it to, I'm going to give it to Rick Sincere, the most influential oh. rapper <laughs> to ever be on sports. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, that's me. That's me. Hey, hey, I like it. Prophecy. Hey, talk your stuff, bro. I will give it to Rick Sincere because he started a whole entire company. Listen. <laughs> With Jesus. the help of me, but one step at a time. No, 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 no. Now I would I would outright say um if if I'm giving it to anybody, it would be um for me it would be James Brown. And I and I know kind of yes, James yeah, Brown. We, we, we want an explanation just to keep going. Yeah, I don't I don't know, I don't know about that. <laughs> I'm no but I wanna hear it. I wanna hear it. Look, y'all I, y'all weren't here. For, and some wait, who was here? Wait, so one of y'all was here. I mean, I'm not gonna say who. One of y'all was here. Anyway, so, <laughs> <laughs> hey, voice, how you doing, brother? No, don't, don't. I ain't say no name. Anyway, so look, during, during that, time, that had to say that had to sell everything, bro. During that time, listen, James Brown. Look, y'all forgot about his influence with Muhammad Ali, right? Like he hung that out. He hung time. out a lot with Muhammad Ali, and y'all forgot about what's happening with Rocky. Y'all remember that Rocky show? Y'all remember Rocky? Facts. Mm-hmm. Y'all remember that? You yeah. mean a movie? No, no, no. It wasn't just a, it, Bernard gonna call time on me. <laughs> <laughs> but Bo Jangles, thank you. Bo no, Jangles, no, no, this is why you the goat, girl. Bo Jangles had a greater impact than James Brown. He owned a Negro League team and helped to push the Negro League forward. Who like it? Uh, Bo Jangles, Bill Bo Jangles Robinson. Mm-hmm. You go old Talk school. about it. Talk about it. You wanna bring up James Brown? We we'll go deeper than that. Bo James Jangles. Brown What's up? Is, where, is where I'm at with this. Quick, look, if I had to say it quickly, I, I took the question differently than everybody because I think Ice Cube, Jay-Z transferred into the business world and are doing amazing things and we know them from their music. I would hey, probably Don't forget have about Snoop, bro. Don't forget yeah. about Snoop, Oh, same bro. thing with Snoop. I, Snoop. I think I, I think Snoop. I would say the same thing that Venora said in terms of Drake is still making music as well as making moves in there. And that's how I kind of took the question, but I definitely can understand the Ice Cube and Jay Z thing. So, if I, I went outside Sorry. of James Brown, who by yeah. far is the one? Fix your face, man. I would go. I would go with Drake. <laughs> I, I like. I like the Venora play on Drake. Yeah. Um, and the reason I'm saying that is because when we thought about them winning that championship, we linked that directly to an artist. Facts. And that's not yeah, common. That's his not song normal. came out the oh, next wait, wait, morning. Oh wait, my bad. My bad. well, no. If if it's music, what? if it's music, right? Then, then it's straight. If it was like an actor or something, there'll be Spike Lee uh, with, with New York, right? Um, but Facts. if it's music straight up, then I, it's been a while since we've directly linked, um, you know, a art of the musical artist to that team. And when they won, we gave him props. You yeah, know what? Girl. You got to give it to What about Drake? Quavo? Hold on. You got to give it to Drake. <laughs> what about Quavo? Wait, what about Quavo? Nobody's oh, thinking on, about the Migos. Oh, Drake curses. He, he takes, won't he can't even stand alone in a song. Wait, hold on. They won't can't even stand alone in a doggone song. What about Quavo? Nobody's checking for Quavo. Ain't nobody yeah, coming to see you, Otis. Get out of here. Yeah, hold on, wait. Drake, Drake takes a picture <laughs> with somebody and they lose. That's fact. Right. You know what? We, bu- yeah, we forgot right. about the other side of this, the Drake curse. 
Yeah. Whose fault is that? Is that the I players' forget. fault? That's or? the school. That's the school. The, the organization and about? everything else in between fault. If if you if you can sit here and say that a pitcher can make a curse, then you're tripping. Talk to the players. Don't talk to Drake. It's a pitcher. They fought. All the mad. Hey, hey, hey. Might they tell you I didn't believe it until that Anthony Joshua situation. <laughs> Bro, tell that to the Ravens, bro. The Ravens was running everybody like a hot knife through butter, and then Drake throws on the big trust, uh, the big trust switch. Bro, look, big trust. Are you talking about playoffs? The playoffs against Titans? Bro, and fold it. And bro, fold it. I don't. I can't say. Look, Lamar put up five hundred total offensive yards. He, they didn't fold, but they, they just couldn't right, score so the ball. The, they, they stopped. Ball. Bro, the <laughs> world, they bro, stopped. What they were doing? Oh, Drake actually. Fouled. They weren't running. Shout out to Quavo, though. Quavo. <laughs> Nobody's checking for Quavo. Oh, <laughs> yeah, leave my Georgia teams out of this, please. Do not talk about Quavo. Hey, right hey, now. hey, the the whole Georgia Quavo just sucks. Night, period. Yeah. I, I don't know. Uh, Shout out my dog, Mike, man. You gotta leave my dog. Leave my, leave my, leave my, leave my <laughs> bro, like, it's crazy. Like, we, that's that's the topic of another day, like, Georgia sport. We'll, we'll talk about it, bro. All right, we'll so, so look, here's the next all. thing we'll do before we head out. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and wrap it up right now. But what we do Facts. for our guests, thank you so much for joining us, Mike Sars. T- teaspoon. I call you Teaspoon now. Um, thank y'all so much man. for joining us, man. Look, what we do before we head out is we give everybody at least like one little spill. You got like 30 minutes to a minute. I mean, I'm sorry, 30 seconds. Whoa. Hold 30 on. seconds Whoa. to a minute um, to, talk, <laughs> <laughs> to, talk about, um, to talk about one thing in sports that you kind of want to bring up, something you want to bring light to, something you want to shed light to. Um, we'll, let, uh, we'll let the vets go ahead and start off first. Um, and then from there, We'll come back um, and then kind of let our, our guests kind of end it off since we let you guys start off the show in, in, in the beginning. So we want y'all to kind of get a feel for how this goes. So we'll kick it off with, um, let me see. Um, who, wants, who wants to kick it off tonight? Miles, is that you? You want to kick it off? Voice, you want to kick it off? I can take you. Bet. Oh, All right, ahead, voice. Look, we'll start off with my man, the myth, the legend, the voice. Go ahead, bro. UFC 249 is supposed to happen in a couple weeks. In a sports starved environment, the fan in me, and especially the combat fan in me, really wants to see this fight come across. But the human being says, Dana, pump your brakes. Khabib can't fight in it because he's off in Russia and no one can come in or go out. So Tony's gonna fight who? Just engage you, which will be a phenomenal fight, but that's not the fight that we wanted to see. Speaking of curses, this is the fifth time this fight has been booked and it won't happen. Just pump the brakes, yeah. wait until it's all clear. Don't put all these fighters and all their families and loved ones at risk. Just stop, wait till we had it all clear and give us what we want. Tony versus Khabib. I like it. All right, Miles, it's on you, brother. Go ahead. What's going on, man? Look, NBA season is not happening right now, but as soon as we get back, the Lakers will be crowned uh, champions, and we're going to see what this whole thing, how this whole thing is going to play out. No, 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 no. Of the Western Conference, for sure. And then we're going to go on to win the NBA Finals, but we're also going to beat the Clippers to get out of the Western Conference and let Kawhi and Paul George know, look, it's not your time yet. League. Look, get your own get your own building before we talk. You just bought it. I need you to go go there and get your own <laughs> building before you try to win. If we're gonna talk about it honestly, basketball talk as well. Talk. You know, as and also as well, two K. I just hit a ninety overall on my my player. Shout out two K Sports. What's happening, you my brother? I thought 90? you were ninety last week. You just huh? hit ninety. I just hit 90. Nah, yes. nah, bring that up. You was, no, you were 90 last kids. week. Calm down. 90, I got, wait, I got wait, you were 90 kids, last bro. week. Are you yeah. 90 playing 90? 2K when I feel like it? Are you 90 or not 90? You were 90 last week. All right, well, maybe I said it last week. I'm 90. Thank you. <laughs> you just bringing it back <laughs> up for no reason? I'm getting my, I'm getting my rep up playing, playing in the rec. And, You're going to lose park, a point for this. Neighborhood. You're going to be 89 I'm, I'm by, a 90, by and, you know, by the end of the next two weeks, I should be like a 93. I feel like I can do that. But look, weekly, anybody, don't give anybody want to, my player. <laughs> anybody want to call at me? Come see me. It's you know what it is. It's King Miles five seven seven six. What's good? All Thank right, bet Connie buddy. Westside. Go ahead and talk to us, brother. Thank you, Miles. Okay, guys, we live in a, a time where documentaries are like right standing out, and one documentary that's that's standing out right now uh, is the Tiger King. Now, I was talking about this with my friend. Thomas earlier today while we was at work and around the kids and when I tell you man that wasn't the that wasn't the thing that kind of kind of got my oomph going see Chris Benoit 
documentary, which is The Dark Side of the Ring, came out. And we were supposed to do a whole show about it, but for some reason we forgot. So I'm in my feelings a little bit. But hey, 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 it's all good because your boy got you. Now, Chris Benoit. Go over time, no, no, well, don't be, don't be, don't be interrupting. Come Dang, I got, I got a thing. I got a thing. Anyway, Chris Benoit. They showed a side of him that we we didn't see, and it and it it it, 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 it rocked me to my core. But I hope, I hope, and I hope, and I encourage those who have not seen it yet, go see it because it's going to it's going to answer some questions that didn't an, that, that that weren't answered when you were a teenager or a little kid. Hey, that's all I got. West Side Out. Awesome, thank you, West Side. All right, JT, talk to us about the shirt, brother. All right, so you know, what I'm saying I know we talk sports and everything, but this shirt I have on, God Over Infertility, is a shirt that's near and dear to my heart. Um, this shirt was birthed pretty much because uh, my wife she battled with PCOS for years, mm. and you know we she went vegan, did lifestyle change and everything, and lo and behold, we were praying to God, praying to God, praying to God, and then. June fourth, two thousand eighteen, our son was born. Amen. Yeah. Um, you know, Amen. Support the business, ratethedoula dot com. Yeah. Uh, purchase this shirt and for women who you know want need that encouragement. She does encouragements. Um, she talked to women how to get to whether what she was. Y'all see my son, like that's my little joy. So yeah, that's that's my nephew. Out. Shout that's out that nephew. shout out that vegan lifestyle that I never do. That's what's right. up, bro. Right. That's right, part. Joe. Let's hear from Venora. What's up, Venora? So v. guys, the WNBA season will hopefully start in May on May 14th. So hopefully that'll be here. And if you guys can pay attention to any of the DC games, I will be there. So hey. definitely check it out. Also, JT, I personally want to buy your shirt. So hey. I'm going to put it out now. And based on what your story, I would love to actually do a campaign that I'll talk to you offline about. So yeah. just once, once again, while we have this time, we should be helping one another and doing things in the, just thinking about bettering yourself. And that's what I think you guys should all be doing. Damn. I don't want to be. I'm, pr- I'm, pr- I'm proud of you, Venora. <laughs> I'm proud of you, Venora. I didn't know we did campaign. Anyway, <laughs> I'll take it. I don't know. No, God over infertility first, definitely. But you know, if we're doing campaigns, then God bless. All right, yeah. so <laughs> yo, let, let me hear from Teaspoon. What's good, brother? Uh, well, um, I just want to bring uh, talk about my uh my fiance. Uh, she is expecting. So hey, amen. Hey, hey amen. Uh, I just want to thank God for the blessing and whatnot. So next, I think next week we should find out what we're having. Uh, so first, oh, kid, uh, that junior, bro, bro, I'm trying to tell you. Well, it's gonna be a third, third, third one. I love yeah, it because he's a junior. Yeah, yeah. Oh, bet. Yeah, yeah. So um, that and then what is it? What else? Um, yeah, just the PSA to the Jacksonville Jaguars. If y'all see this, tank the season. Bro, tank it. Tank the process. Why don't y'all just get Cam and call it a day? Bro, I don't want Cam Newton. I just want I want a rookie quarterback on a cheap deal. <coughs> you want Trevor Lawrence. Tank for Trevor. Tank for Trevor. <laughs> wow. Hey, I'm a Clemson guy. I'll take that. Yeah, brother. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> tank. tank. Mike Sarge, what's good, brother? Talk to us. Oh, man. Like, first of all, I enjoyed my time, man. Y'all excuse my extraness, man. I'm just passionate about sports, man. <laughs> no, we love like, it, bro. Uh, yeah. Right. I'm just I'm just passionate. I, I will say, though, if there's one thing that I'm, I'm actually really excited about from what happened in this past NFL season, to be real with y'all, there was something that was bugging me, something that's been bugging me really the past two years, uh, because we always say it's about results, right, especially in the NFL. It's, you know, it's results-oriented, but it seems like that only applies to certain people. And this year, someone, there's a particular coach that stepped up, and now I'll be happy to not hear trash about him, and that's Mike Tomlin for the yeah. Pittsburgh Steelers. I don't know why for the past two years we've been hearing people talk about, like, oh, well, what about his job security, things like that. Wait, you Dude, mean nice. the guy that is his win percentage is way above 500? You mean yeah. the man that has – 
one no no two Super Bowls you mean that guy like you that guy. Why, why like any other coach we talking about this he's not having no issue any other coach with that many AFC appearances we're not talking about like yeah. so uh for me man like I'm just excited that like for once there's gonna be a, a person that proved that they can legit coach it just wasn't a bunch of weapons it wasn't just a bunch of hall of famers and things like that yeah. his best quarterback got hurt he lost Le'Veon Bell he lost Antonio Brown what do, you, what do you got to say now? Like, the man no. did what he was supposed to do. His other uh, quarterback getting had. beat up by helmets. Yeah, Right. Uh, look, season. man. <laughs> look, so, uh, I, like, I'm just I'm just happy to see, like, when I see players or when I see coaches uh, that you can tell put in the work um, yeah. and they get bad mouths and just to see them, like, come out on, on, on top, so to speak. Yeah, they didn't win the Super Bowl and things like that. But, like, he that's definitely real. did more than what most people expected him to do. So, that's my final take. Hey, I got a joke. They told Miles Garrett to hit the folks, and they wind up hitting Rudolph. Oh, <laughs> what? Oh, then, then we go over this last week. <laughs> Come on, man. Come on, man. Uh, yeah, let me add. Draft Isaiah Simmons, Jacksonville. If he's there yeah. at number nine. Oh, draft. hold on. No, he need, he needs to go ahead and come to twelve. I'm cool uh, with that. All right, y'all. So look, um, what, what, already know. With my final, I'll, I'll say this. Um, we just got breaking. Breaking news about three hours ago from um, the from Sports Center, it says that the NCAA Division One Council voted to allow schools to provide spring One sport year. athletes an additional season of competition and an yeah. extension of their period of eligibility, right? Nice. And I think that's I think that's a blessing, right? Because a lot of people are losing. You you see a lot of people losing seasons, a lot of seniors losing seasons, and because we're kind of in the middle of this spring semester. I mean, it's really tough. A lot of people are losing March Madness, and this is the time where they had a chance to shine, showcase themselves, and really get a shot at, at the pro level. Um, so giving them an extra year of eligibility is good. I think it'll still be their choice whether they want to take it or not, right? But it's a blessing to have it for them. Um, oh, for sure. And so I think that's a good look by the NCAA. The other thing I wanted to bring up is just really simple, man, and it, it's just a public service announcement. So um, Stan Barrett, if you guys know him, he's, a, uh, he's from Louisiana, and you know Louisiana right now is being hit a lot by the coronavirus and um he just shared that um he he grew up with um his cousin larry right um his cousin is 51 he was healthy before he got um the coronavirus but now he's gone he, he says please protect yourselves and those around you and don't get complacent right and basically what's happening is that i know a lot of people are still meeting up still gathering still coming together look we're all coming together right now but we're virtual right we're remote yeah. listen yeah. please 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 stay home or stay away from large gatherings stay away from gatherings where you can possibly get a, get, get infected a lot of people are getting infected and not being themselves at risk, but they're passing it on to somebody who can't deal with it like you can. So yeah. please, it ain't for you. It's not always for you. It's for the person who can't deal with it like you can, right? Yeah. And maybe it is for you too. Stay home if you can, do your work remotely, cut off every situation that could possibly lead to you catching the coronavirus or giving it yeah. to somebody else. Yeah, cheating, so cheating numbers are way down. It's great. You said what? Said so cheating oh, numbers are way down. Oh, hey, hey, oh, hey, divorce oh. numbers aren't though. Divorce numbers aren't yeah. though. <laughs> hey, I'm, I ain't gonna lie to y'all. It's tough, but it's a blessing. It's a blessing. It's a blessing. Oh, amen. Amen. It's a blessing. And on, on top of that, man, um, this is the one time in America, man, where 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 black men can walk around wearing a mask and nobody's having a problem with it. So take advantage. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. I, I win it. I like it. I no, like it. Take advantage. <laughs> that was good. All right, y'all. Hey, look, with MTMV Sports, man, we signing out. Everybody say goodbye. Y'all be safe. Peace. Yes. God bless.